Hello chess lovers, Soren here and I have a fantastic game for you. With the white piece is playing Russian chess grandmaster Alexander Baburin and his opponent is Indonesian chess grandmaster Utut Adianto. This game was played in 1993 in Liechtenstein. Now let's see what happened on the board. Baburin started with d4 and d5 by Adianto, c4, white goes for queen's gambit and d takes c4, we see queen's gambit accepted. As blacks d takes c4 surrenders the center, white will try to see space in the center and use it to launch an attack on black's position. Knight f3, knight f6, e3. Now white wants to win back the lost pawn with a tempo by developing the bishop a6. And after bishop takes c4, black advanced on the queen's side with a tempo by pushing the b pawn forward. Black is now preparing to fianchetto to his bishop. Bishop d3, bishop b7, white castles king's side, e6, a4, white is challenging black's pawn structure on the queen's side, and b4 not allowing white to weaken his position, knight d2, knight d7, knight b3 and c5. Black is gaining more space and at the same time is challenging white's center. d takes c5, knight takes c5, knight takes c5, bishop takes c5 and queen c2. After which black played rook c8 and already black is threatening some discovered attacks, that's why Baburin moved his queen this time on e2 square. Actually instead of playing queen c2 it was better to play queen e2 straight away, but in the game we first see queen c2 and only after rook c8 queen e2. Queen b6, e4, h6, a5, queen a7, knight d2, Queen a8, black is starting to put more pressure on e4 square. King h1, white is unpinning the pawn on f2 square in order to push it forward. h5 and f3. By strengthening the pawn on e4 square, white wants to free this knight, for example, bring it either on b3 or on c4. h4. Meanwhile, black is advancing on the queen's side, knight c4. And knight h5, already there is a deadly knight g3 threat. For example, just a random move, if you play bishop d2, then knight g3 check, and white king is actually getting checkmated. This bishop is controlling the g1 square, and the rook is killing the enemy king. After knight h5, actually white's position is so terrible that, according to the engine, the best move is g3. If h takes g3, then h3. Although black has a huge advantage and white actually has no chance to survive with his crushed king side. Let's go back but in the game after knight h5 bishop e3 was played. White is blocking this diagonal but it turns out that there is no way to stop black from bringing into life his intentions and knight g3 check is on the board. White is just forced to accept the sacrifice, h takes g3 was played, h takes g3, discover check, king g1, and another powerful move, king e7. You may ask, but what's the idea of playing king e7, but just have a look. Queen e1 was played, a desperate move, white wants to get rid of this pawn on g3 square, but it turns out that already it's too late. In this position, Utut Adianto made a move and white resigned. Can you find his next move? Ready? He simply played rook h1 check and white resigned. Now can you understand that whole idea of first sacrificing the knight and then king e7? The whole idea was to open up the queen's path. Now if king takes h1 then simply rook h8 check and then rook h1 check. Again black should sacrifice the second rook as well and finally the queen joins the attack. Queen h8 check. If king g1 then queen h2 checkmate. A very impressive final combination I think. Though Alexander Baburin resigned earlier and didn't allow Black to go for the second rook sacrifice, but all in all that combination was fantastic. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you. For more games don't forget to subscribe to my channel, also press the bell to get notified about new uploads. I will see you in the next video.